All right, hello good friends and welcome to lesson 9.5, Multiplying Fractions. And it's found on page 300 of your textbooks. And the goal is to multiply two fractions less than one. So no mixed numbers, no improper fractions here yet. That's for another day. All right, the problem, about one-tenth of Canadians who are 12 and older downhill ski. About two-fifths of these skiers are between the ages uh, 12 and 24. So what are they looking for here? What fraction of Canadian of the Canadian population between the ages of 10 to 24 downhill skiing? Now we're looking for a fraction. We're not looking for a percentage, we're not looking for real numbers, we're looking for a percentage. So about one-tenth of Canadians who are 12 and older downhill ski, two-fifths of these skiers are between 12 and 24. The rest are old like me. All right, so it's a couple models we're going to look at, and then we're going to look at a third model um, with a different question. So two models to look at this particular question, and then another one to, with another question just to summarize it all up. All right, first example, and we've been doing this using a fraction strip model. So notice, um, so here's the question again. All right, and we're going to be using a fraction strip model to be working this question out. So it says that one tenth of Canadians, um, one tenth of Canadians downhill ski, two fifths are between 20, 12 and 24. So here's one tenth. Here's the fraction strip for one tenth. Now, can you go lower than one tenth? Well, yes, you can. You can break up this fraction strip into smaller portions smaller portion so two-fifth of one-tenth so two-fifths so we have five strips here we split this into five strips so one two three four five okay so of so here's one ten here okay one ten and here is two-fifth now what is one-tenth what is two-fifths of one-tenth well it's 2 50th because we have 50 strips here now we have 50 strips because these are all all of these 1 tenth tiles were divided into 5 so in total 2 of 50 are filled in now 2 of 50 can we do this no we can't okay well we could do it but it'd be not done lowest terms simplify your fraction 1 25th and that's the way you continue that one okay you've done this before so this is nothing new but just know that we have 1 tenth and you can continue to break it down even more so 2 fifths of 1 tenth all right two there's five here filled in two of them in total it's 2 50th your lowest terms are 125, 1 over 25, okay? Just to recap, and we can recap this again in class, but take notes, copy this example down, pause right now if you want, and ask questions in class. Come in and come prepared with questions, okay? Good? So we're all good here. Well done. Pause if you need to, and continue when you want to. Next example. All right, using a grid model to determine a fraction of a fraction. All right, so this is something new here. So it says calculate two-fifths times one-tenth. So you see a, a grid here, okay, and you see the area is 5 times 10. Where am I getting the 5? Where am I getting the 10? Well, 5 right here, okay, and 10 from the denominator is right here. So area is 5 times 10, 5 times 10. Now what's filled in here? Well let's break that down a little bit more. Okay, so we'll take it over to this diagram here. Alright, so we are dealing with two-fifths right here and here's what's filled in. Two of the five are filled in. Okay, so two-fifths and here's one-tenth. One filled in, ten for the denominator. Okay, so again two-fifths is right here. Two of the five are filled in and five is going down this way. Two fifths is going down this way. One tenth is going across this way. Of the ten, one is filled in. Of the five from this fraction here, these two are filled in. Okay? So you have two fifths, all right? Two fifths 
of okay sorry let's do that again so one tenth one tenth of two fifths will bring you to again so if there's 10 times 5 here there's 50 squares here okay it'll take you to 2 50th or you simplify it comes out to again 1 tenth okay good you know you, you know what you can also do right you can also just multiply right across because as I said earlier you can say 2 fifths of 1 tenth you just multiply it across so basically 2 fifths times 1 10 is 2 fiftieth no need for a common denominator in multiplying fractions 2 fifths and then you simplify 1 25th let's see if that works on something else now again copy all this down take some time with this and copy this all down all right let's see if this method works now I playfully called it the Stemenia method but it's not really I didn't really put this method together I'm just going to demonstrate it you know you can try it in class in my class so you can call this the menu method feel free but it's not really a method I just made that up I'm just playing anyway so here's another question about two-thirds uh, of the students at Wyndham High Ring, uh, Ridge School are in grades 7 and 8 so two-thirds of these students uh, I'm sorry about five-eighths of these students are girls what fraction of the students in the school are girls in grade 7 and 8 so again two-thirds of five-eighths or five-eighths of two-thirds multiply it across 2 times 10 sorry 2 times 5 is 10 3 times 8 is 24 can we continue can we make this smaller can we simplify this yeah we can 5 12 okay so what fraction of the students in the school are girls in grade 7 and 8? The answer is 5 twelfths. And again, we just multiplied across. That's it. Now, in multiplication, like unlike adding and subtracting, you do not need a common denominator. You need both these fractions to be fractions. Okay? Um, and again, we'll go through that another day as far as working with mixed numbers and improper fractions but when you have two fractions these are less than one less than the whole you just multiply across 2 times 5 is 10 3 times 8 is 24 simplify it to 5 over 12 so remember multiplication don't need the common denominator just multiply across multiply across the fractions boom like that okay beautiful well done good do you think we're done not quite okay if you look in your textbooks okay you will see question number nine match each expression with its products so you need to match them up I'm not sure which one it is well actually I do but I'm not going to tell you yet um, and you find out and come prepared with this question I don't know push pause and write these questions down go to your textbook and look at question number nine your call um, but come prepared with these questions and we'll be checking it over and running through them. We'll run through each example in class. At least try them, okay? And if you don't get them done, I'm not letting you in class. I'm totally joking. I'm so joking. Come prepared. If you don't get it, you don't get it. That's great. That's what class is for, okay? We'll go through them, all right, together, because that's what we do. All right? Thanks, guys. And we will see you um, next day. All right? Thanks.